you see before you the quiet waters of the Grand Union Canal. You may think that not much could live in dirty, muddy waters like these, but you'd be wrong. I actually saw a fish come to the surface not long ago, and now I'm trying to photograph it for my series, Life on This Planet. This is David Uncleborough reporting from the Grand Union Canal at Hemel Hempstead. I saw another one. Can you see it out there in the middle? Yes, sir. I can't see on this small screen if they're showing, but they might show up again later. Every so often a small fish will just break the surface as it tries something, see if it's edible or not. Actually, it's an interesting test of the camera, uh, David Attenborough. Um, impersonations notwithstanding, it's actually an interesting test of the camera to put it over water where you can see with the naked eye little fishes just below the surface um, and then see afterwards, I'm filming in HD+, and see afterwards whether once it's blown up to its full size whether, the, these, whether these fish are at all visible or not. But uh, some of the ripples on the surface are just, you know, bits of dead fruit falling off the tree. But some of them are actually made by these fishes breaking the surface with their mouths as they... Oh, there was one, for example. Most of them, actually, they're, they're, you can just about see. But because the, the water is so murky... Not an awful lot going on in the towpath, so I'm quite free to speak without people wondering what, what's this guy doing talking to himself. Most of the days of my holiday, in fact, have been spent in front of the computer keeping up with work. But uh, today I got a visit from a very dear friend who hopefully is oh, there's a fish down there watching, and I came with him in the car as far as the Hemel Bypass is concerned in order to make sure we didn't get lost in the town. Then I popped out and walked back and I kind of got, I saw the canal towpath down there and I thought I'll go on one of my funny walks. I brought my gold list with me in case I was going to find anything, any place to just stop and have a bit of a, a glass of something and uh, do something, just have a little bit of time away from the computer, away from the desk, a little bit of, it's a lovely day actually, it's, it was chilly in the morning but now it's Excellent walking weather. I haven't done a proper walk for nearly a week, really. It's what it seems to have had up to, although I've done about six kilometres every day, just going to and from school and around the town a bit. But actually a decent walk I haven't had for nearly a week. So uh, hopefully that will be an opportunity. It's quite firm underfoot, so that will be an opportunity to to do that. Somebody's on the other side of the road, of the canal, which must be their garden. I think that's people's gardens. He's fishing off his own garden there, which is presumably a person has every right to fish off their own garden. I have no idea, but not my business to worry about that. I don't like fishermen anyway, to be honest with you. I don't like fishing. I've not done much of it, as you can see, and that's not because I 
I don't think it would be an interesting sport to do. No doubt it would be interesting. I just don't like the suffering and a lot of them do end up getting infected and dying and you see dead fish around on here. Whereas if it was because of poison then they'd all be dead, wouldn't they? So presumably something's killing some of them. And I think that the hooks in the mouths don't do them any good really. On the one hand the existence of fishermen who are willing to pay does ensure that places are stocked but then even the stocking of places doesn't mean much because they might not be being stocked with the things which you would naturally find there. Anyway, they've got that space there which is obviously something to do with where they live and they're doing their fishing from there and that's entirely up to them. I'm not going to film them in a way which identifies anybody. But it was a real pleasure to see my friend today, who I haven't seen since university. He was my closest friend at university. Um, and hadn't seen him for a long, long time. Um, probably 20 years. So, and he doesn't seem to have aged today, so there you go. He's doing very well. And it was a, a big blessing to see him, and that was really good. Um, so hopefully that won't be the last time we see each other in this life. And uh, yeah, I should do more of that. I should do more of that sort of thing. So if you're watching and you haven't seen me for a long time, then then uh, and you, you can see a way of putting it right. Then let's talk. These are nice, aren't they? The little voices. Baby moorhens. Keeping in contact with one another as they swim along. We're just going under Durrance Hill Road in Hemel Hempstead Bridge. These weren't here when I was a boy. It would have been a bit post-industrial I think at this point. There's a, a gang of geese coming the other way. If you do have a, a nice waterside home like that one, it's nice to have a boat, like a canoe that you can go up and down the canal on. I mean, that's a real advantage. It's a nice lifestyle to have something like that. If I lived in England and had enough money, then certainly a, a house backing onto the canal would be uh, would have more advantages, I think, than disadvantages. It has not, I imagine it would have the occasional disadvantage. Um, but we don't really get mosquitoes and things like that too much in this country, so the biggest disadvantage that you'd have of a location like that in Poland um, probably wouldn't happen. Also, the system of locks means that you probably wouldn't have much of a flood risk either from this, but... Uh, Especially as you see the the uh, lawns going up, they're quite they're quite steep. The houses are indeed a good you know meter or so higher than the canal itself, so there's not really a risk of it getting up to them on, under normal circumstances. Of course, if the uh, if the ice caps all melt and things, then we'd have to do a rethink of that one. Anyway, I'm not really intending to make this a long film. I've done this bit before, I think, three years ago. I've done... Oh, I see. Thank you. I've done this bit before, I think, three years ago. Not many change. Oh, this person's even able to pull his whole boat up onto there. That must need a bit of winching to get up there like that. But, uh... It's interesting how he's done that. But, um... I think another issue, if you've got your home backing onto the canal, is a little bit of privacy because obviously most people in their, their back gardens, they don't get people peering in, but the, the canal towpath on this side is obviously public, so anybody can, can peer across, which is why a lot of people have got trees planted between themselves and the, uh, and the canal, 
so that it's not such an imposition to have people just wandering around all times of the day and night just peering into their back backs of their homes which normally you don't get the public doing that you get your neighbors doing it of course but uh, hopefully you, you know you, that's a limited amount of people and hopefully there might even be people you get on with or in a, at least in some some case of mutuality with because you can peer at them as well And at the point where you see the white bridge ahead there, that's the point in which you go over to the other side of the towpath. Anyway, like I say, I'm not going to make it a long film. I will switch it back on again if I think of some more ideas or things to talk about today.